Hey everyone, we are lying in the back of our freshly painted Brumpy. It looks freaking awesome. Do you want to see it? Let's go. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. The Brumby is painted and looks freaking amazing. Now we have over there a whole pile of Forester stuff and we've got a painted Brumby and now the job of course is to put them together and today we're going to be doing that with a little bit of help from an expert. Dave from Subarino is here. What's Subarino? Well they're actually based in Perth and he's come all the way to Sydney which is like flying from New York to LA just saying it's a freaking long way to help us. Dave. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for having me, Marty. Now, you're no stranger to Brumbies, so can you tell me what we're looking at? Like, what kind of Brumby is this? Tell me everything. So, this would be a early 90s, late 80s Brumby. Correct. Yep, 92. Yep. Um, commonly used for a sort of a farm vehicle originally yep. in Australia. Uh, and, um, yeah, it's got a few things missing. Be good to, be good to put uh, this Brumby back to work. So, Dave, what got you into the whole Brumby thing? Like, how did you become a fan of them and how'd you end up here? I was a big fan of them in the sort of late 90s when I first got my driver's license. I liked the wagons. Back then, the Brumbies were a bit out of reach financially for a, a young bloke on his pea plates. Um, just loved the shape. And as time's gone on, the wagons are nearly extinct, but the Brumbies live on yeah, for farms all sorts of uh, people lowering them, lifting them, all sorts of things. Why do you think they're so, why do you reckon they're so popular? What is it about them? I think it's the shape. I honestly think it's the shape. It's yeah. that um, El Camino sort of look. Yeah, of like the, a mini El Camino, truck. is it? Yeah, almost? like a mini El Camino. Um, look, they're, they're really popular worldwide. Um, the Brat in America yep. and the Brumby here in Australia. We are going for a sort of on-road vehicle, more so, which is why we've chosen to go for the all-drive gearbox out of the Forester. Yes. Also dual range. Now, I understand that that makes things a little bit more difficult when it comes to like custom shafts and tail shafts and things like that. We've also got um, some conversion gear that you have brought with you. Yes. So maybe we'll have a bit of a look at that. Yep. And then we've basically got to shoehorn our Forester drive line in. Is that sort of how That's it works? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. A bit of customization of tail shafts. Um, the gear linkages and a gearbox cross member. Sweet, so this should drive like a much more modern Subaru ideally, but oh. still look cool like this. Absolutely, All absolutely. Right. Well, let's have a look at some of the gear that you brought with you and then we'll get into it. No worries, Marty. Over the years, Dave has turned his passion for Brumbies and early Subarus into a small manufacturing operation and is the guy on the west coast of Australia to see when your Brumby needs some love. He's developed a bunch of parts to both repair and modify these cars to help keep them on the road for years to come. And I can't wait to get them into our car. So we're at the stage now where it's uh, painted, but basically nothing else is done underneath. It's completely stock Brumby. But luckily, Dave has designed a bunch of parts that makes these things extra cool, specifically a lift kit and also a five stud conversion. So Dave, tell me, tell me a bit about this because maybe we'll start with your five stud conversion because it's yep. in front of us. So what is involved in this kit? So basically we've got some custom made hubs here. They're gonna go on the rear. So we're gonna be adapting the rear drums that are on the Brumby from factory. We're putting the Forester disc brakes onto it. Oh, so disc brake conversion as well. Absolutely, so not just absolutely. A, so five -star. Um, what's also involved is the Forester has a rear handbrake. Yeah. Whereas the Brumby has front handbrakes. So Sounds bizarre, how you yank the, yank the handbrake and then the car like. Absolutely. Um, so these are custom made handbrake cables that yep. will adapt it. So we've got the handbrake cable on the back. So what I think is a bit clever about this, so that goes onto the basically like diff, like rear diff That's housing, it. whatever. And that allows us to bolt in the Forester hubs. Yes, we'll be up, well, the Forester backing plate. The backing plate backing and then the plate hub goes for the brake caliper. And then the hub, this will slide straight Super onto the cool. Brumby spline there. Slide straight on using the Brumby wheel bearings and we'll be able to put the EJ rotor straight onto that. Oh, the, the brake rotor fits the that The brake well. rotor actually fits that. So why is that so exciting? Well, the Brumby comes with a four by, what is it? Four by 108? Four by, four by 140 on the Brumby? Or 140. Yes. Yeah, so Which it's is very unusual. super unusual. So you can get wheels from, but your wheel choice is a bit limited. So why would you do this? Well, the answer is five by 100 wheels. They're just everywhere for Subarus. Forrester wheels, Liberty Impreza. Some Volkswagens. The, Volkswagens, all the aftermarket stuff. Uh, it opens up a whole lot of wheel options. You're also getting disc brake conversion. And for the front, 
What do we do for the front? For the front, we do a modification to the control arm, yep. and that allows us to fit the entire Forrester front knuckle, brake assembly, and yep. everything to that. And so the shock absorber, as long as we adapt the top to go to the Brumby 2 rather yes, than the 3 yep. that you get on the Forrester? That's exactly right. So we can um, modify the uh, strut. Yeah. It'll be the EJ strut, which will also give us camber adjustment, which oh. any Brumby owner will know, we can't adjust our camber, of course. and it's horrid from factory. So for our car, we'll probably go like a custom built coilover, so we have even more adjustment and we can tweak everything. But um, this also brings me to the lift kit. So we're gonna do a five stud conversion, a disc brake conversion. We're gonna move the handbrake from the front to the back, but we're also gonna do a lift. Yes. So this is your lift kit. Can you tell me a bit about how this works? So it's a two inch uh, body lift kit. Yep, and what's a body lift compared to a lift? So a body lift kit effectively lifts the body off the running gear. Yes. So we do that because of our CV joints on the front and back. Yep. If you don't do that, the angle of the CVs is too much. Yeah. We just chew through joints. We Got already it. chew through joints as it is. Yep. If we don't do that. A body lift allows you usually to run bigger wheels, which also then sort of gives you a bit more clearance, Absolutely. which is why people Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. my truck is And increases lift. our approach and departure angle if you're build, building an off-roader. Yep. Um, it's a great upgrade for a lot of people. And so we have, does this, so this means basically we've got to lift the subframes and the body away from each other. Is that's that, it, is that's that what it. the blocks to do? Because that actually looks a lot like, I don't know if you guys remember, but when we did our Outback and Outfap and a few other cars, factory they look like this. Yes. Yeah, Just factory. Not as big. Yeah, factory that looks like those. Um, yeah, so basically we're, run, we're putting blocks between the running gear, yep. uh, spaces between the suspension, front and back, and extended bolts and hardware that's required. We've got a heap of awesome Brumby parts. Now it's time to put them in. Exciting package has just arrived. So Chris from Shockworks, who are down in Melbourne, has, very last minute for me, created some custom coilovers for us for our Brumby. And this is super cool because on the bottom you have Forrester spec which fits our hubs and on the top you've got Brumby but he's also created a shock like an inverted monotube thing like a, a good one that incorporates the lift so we don't have to use the plates which is kind of cool just as in terms of like making it really nice and neat and that will go into the front of our Brumby and hopefully be the perfect. I always like to try and install new suspension in cars that are this old and with this many kilometres on them. The difference a new set of shocks makes is just massive. It rides better, handles better, it's safer, and in this case, we can tweak the height of the suspension to get it sitting just right. Brumby is in the air. We're gonna start with the rear end. We're basically gonna pull all the old Brumby stuff apart, work out how much Forrester stuff we can jam in there, and then we will have an excellent five stud converted Brumby. Dave, this is freaking awesome, man. Yeah, cheers. It's a good bit of kit. I, I feel like there's a lot of time that goes into this, and we often talk about this, that someone else's time is what you pay for with the R&D. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because if I was right. going to try and do this myself, three months later I might have a, a thing, but you've, you've done yep, it. Yep, yep. It had to be very particular about yep. spacing everywhere to make yep. this hub-centric for the rotor um, and hub-centric for the rim when the rim goes on as well. So the benefit of this, obviously, is that we can use a Forrester disc, we can use a Forrester caliper, we can use all Forrester stuff and Subaru stuff, which means when you want to buy brakes, you can just go and buy a Forrester Exactly gear. right, a lot more available. Yep, and, um, and get obviously better braking as well. So this is our five-star conversion done on the back. 
Um, a few more bits and pieces to do on here with the brake line, which also is part of Dave's kit, and then we're gonna move on to the front. Once our mock-up with the old parts is complete, we're gonna be fully reconditioning our Forester parts and using all new rotors and pads. Our five-stud conversion in the rear is done. We're actually gonna do the rear lift kit first. Uh, that's the body lift. So the way that works is we unbolt a bunch of these brackets, those brackets, brackets there, brackets there, brackets there, and then we put the spaces in that Dave's made. So we're gonna whiz them off and install the whole thing. All the original bolts have been in there for over 30 years, so a bit of WD-40 helps loosen things up. The kit comes with all new bolts, and when you're doing a lift, it's important to check the grade of the bolts to make sure they're equal to or better than what you're taking out. This lift kit mirrors the way Subaru lifted the Outback version of their Liberty Wagon, using one-piece blocks and extended bolts to suit. We then also need to extend or replace the rear shocks to make sure all the suspension works correctly. So thanks to Dave's expertise, the lift kit, which is freaking awesome, is in. And we now got a two inch lift in the back. So tomorrow morning, first thing, we're gonna do our two inch lift in the front. Then we've got another special guest coming to help us get the engine and box and everything in. Our reconditioned gearbox is gonna be back tomorrow morning as well. So we have heaps still to do. I'm getting very, very excited about this Brumby adventure. It's all coming together. It's a brand new day. It's a whole new world. Do you sing? No. Okay, good. I shouldn't either. Uh, what are we doing, Aaron? What's happening in here? There's nothing in there and we got to get something in there. Tell me what's going to go down. So I think the plan for today is get the engine and transmission into this thing, which should be fun. Yep. I haven't actually worked on one of these before, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, the gearbox is not actually here yet, but it will be here later today. Let's put a Forrester engine in a Brumby. Start the music. So our first Subaru Genuine part is going into the Brumby. I've got ball joints that are from the Forester. Use the Forester Vins, get myself the right parts. Um, some stuff you can't get genuine anymore because this stuff is so old, so they don't keep it in stock. Um, but where possible, we are gonna use genuine stuff, particularly when we're rebuilding the engine. The gearbox has been rebuilt with genuine parts as well. And so anything like this that we can put in, we're gonna use brand new stuff. This is the moment of truth. Just like the factory, it's loaded in from underneath, although they never loaded this motor in. So we've updated. So we're gonna lift the hoist up. And the engine's coming with it, and the box is coming with it. Nothing's falling out. It's a good day. That's awesome. EJ powered Brumby, look at that. It's in. Now I've got to make a gearbox cross member and heaps of other stuff from scratch, but we couldn't do that until it was mounted. So now it's mounted. 
So thanks to Dave's awesome lift kit that he's put heaps of time and effort into designing for the Brumby, the engine fits perfectly, just buys us a bit more space. At the back though, we do have to make a cross member and adapt the original mount to fit onto the Brumby cross member. There's a few different ways to do this, but the easiest way is just to make a plate and reinforce it in through there. There's actually not a lot of weight on this, like I can lift it by hand. Um, the engine mounts plus this mount sort of take the majority of the weight. It's actually quite a light engine as well, being a single overhead cam. So to make this up, weld it to the Brumby thing, clean and paint all that up, and it should look excellent. These old cars like the Forester or the Brumby itself can just end up in the bin, but it doesn't need to. Collective Spirit can bring projects like this back to life, and it's going to need a community of car enthusiasts from across the country to help heal the wounds of this old car. We're going to have to make a lot of stuff from scratch, but using some basic tools, we should be able to make it work. This project is going to take months. There are some extraordinary talented people out there who can knock this sort of thing out in days or weeks. But it's also not uncommon for a project to also take years to get drivable. The reality is you can get caught out with broken parts, run out of funds, life gets in the way, or you just lose motivation. Getting some mates involved helps keep you motivated to get to those special moments that make it worth it like tightening the final bolt, the first start, or the first drive. The front end of our five-star conversion is now pretty much done. So we don't have drive shafts, but what we do have is a deconstructed one that Aaron pulled apart just so we can bolt it in. The idea is to get the wheels on, check our heights, make sure our coilovers are all good, make sure everything's sitting in the right place, and make it look like a finished car, because it's easy enough to get some drive shafts spun up. So this is going to go in the back of the hub. Um, we're waiting on our wheels. So we've got some tyres, some BF Goodrick tyres, and now waiting on our wheels, waiting for them to get fitted. As soon as they arrive, I'm going to slap the wheels on and see what it looks like. So our BF Goodrick KO2s have arrived. We have no idea if these are actually going to fit. This is full guessing game. We have completely changed our drive line, changed our stud pattern, changed everything. They might be too big. I'm just going to say that right now. But either way, we're putting them on and getting a photo of it because I think it's going to look amazing. If we have to go over to road tyres, no big deal. We'll grab some good ones. Here we go. Heavy boy. Oh, shit, that looks tough. It's going to disappoint a lot of people. Potentially the two guys have been helping all day but these look so sick, but I think they're gonna to be too big. I still wanna see them on there because I wanna see this thing like full lift spec. And you could still drive it like that if you really wanted to, as long as you never turn the steering wheel, but the back's gonna be all right. <laughs> Is it hitting the guards? No. no. Oh, it looks so tough. Look at the height of it. Full jacked up. Needs more height in the front. <laughs> it's ridiculous. We're probably gonna to have to go like, basically one inch smaller. And they might not be as chunky, but we wanted to see it with chunky tires, which we have, it looks amazing. If you've ever wondered how to lower your Brumby, you just need a Dave, you get him from Perth, it's on the other side of Australia for anyone who's wondering, a 19 mil ratchet, and then watch this. Torsion bars, people. One bolt to adjust it and bang, you lower your Brumby. Isn't that cool? So unfortunately the muddies don't fit, they do look hectic, look so good. but being such a classic car, I think we just need a mad, Classic road tyre, something with a little bit of chunk, something with some sidewall, that is something that we're going to have to work out next episode. And with our choice of drive line as well, we have gone to all-wheel drive, which is going to make it an excellent on-road car, all-wheel drive all the time. And we do have the uh, dual range box as well, if we do want to have some fun. So we're going to adjust our uh, adjust our tyres to suit. But just a reminder, this is to celebrate 50 years of Subaru being in Australia. And you could end up owning this car if you're in Australia, because it is going to be raffled off with all the profits going to the Australian Road Safety Foundation. There's a link in the description, people. It could Very be exciting. in your garage. It could be in your snowfield. It could be in your goat paddock. It's pretty exciting. Make sure you check out the link below.